Welcome back, Pink Flamingos, to Live on Bowen. Our second guest tonight is a stand-up comedian, radio host, writer, producer, podcaster, actor, and all-round legend. You've seen him on Rove, The Librarians, Good News Week, Spicks and Specs, and his live shows across the nation. I'm so glad he's here with us. It's Justin Hamilton! Yeah. Hello! Hi. Thanks for coming! Thank you for having me. We made it happen. Please take a seat. This is good. We did. I'm so, you, you always... You're always running off around the nation doing gigs. It was so hard to get you here, but I'm glad you're here. I'm basically on the run. That's you're, what I'm doing. Yeah, really? I, uh, I get up to mischief and then I have to go on the run and, you know, yeah. go and visit all my children all around <laughs> Australia. So. Well, that's good. That's nice of you. Yeah. The, uh, you do roadshow a lot. Mm. What's your favourite thing about, like, country uh, Australia? Uh, just ending up in places that you never expected to go. Right. Like, it's, it, there's something very exciting to know that talking into a magic stick that makes noise has somehow <laughs> taken you to some place like Caratha. What's Caratha? Car yeah, what is Caratha? <laughs> yeah. That's a very good question, actually. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's a place in the north of Western Australia. And right. when you're just standing out in a town that you have no reason to be in except for you make a few jokes and you yeah. think, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I was just in Charleston, actually. Have you ever been there before, no. Charleston? Oh, my God, that was cold. Like, you know, it's cold here. Right. It was freezing in Charleston. Right. Like, they had an outdoor toilet, and at one point, uh, I was hosting the show there. I went to the bathroom, I came back, I had to tell all the guys, if you go into the toilet, <laughs> give yourself five minutes, because it's going to take you that long to find your knob. Like, <laughs> I honestly looked down and went, I'm sure I packed it. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be there. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, you're going to be in Melbourne for a little while, because mm. you've got a new season of The Shelf coming up. Mm. So, for those who don't know what The Shelf is, you should get to Melbourne and, and watch it. It's basically, uh, well... What, all the things you can't do on TV, basically, yeah, live. That's what we call it, the comedy show you'll never see on TV, because you know what it's like. It's yeah. like radio wants our comedians to be uh, good company, yeah. and TV wants our comedians to be informed, and we just want them to be funny. So, <laughs> yeah. What a revolutionary <laughs> what? idea! Are you so kidding me? I kind of think of it as, the, as some of the younger viewers will probably be thinking, wah, but for our older viewers, right. I kind of think of it as the bastard child of the late show right. and the big gig, and so it's... It's, uh, it's very much a, a live comedy variety night. And we try to give, uh, you know, like, if you see, like, a Will Anderson or a Rove mm. McManus on the show, rather than doing stand-up, we get them doing different things, like, right. you know, chats and uh, doing more improv. And then what yeah. we'll do is we'll showcase, like, a younger comedian doing their stand-up. And then we've got sketch. Uh, Cal Wilson does an ongoing character called Adele, who's been in every season the of book it. Book reviews and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, great. so you're well, always just trying to keep the audience slightly off balance. When I saw Rove there, usually he does very personable, uh, everyman style stuff. Yeah. But you made him do uh, unusual observations, like, don't you hate it when you're gonna when you see Les Mis and you're like, oh no, what if I don't like it? I've got to have dinner with Russell Crowe on the weekend. Like, oh right, yeah, yeah all that sort of stuff. It's like, oh, where's the spatula? <laughs> oh, the LA home. Like. Right. Can I can I just point out we didn't make Rove do anything. We just <laughs> uh, we gave him the opportunity to you yeah. know lay it out. Well, that's why and it's it so went, good. Boom. Yeah. You know uh, the the thing that terrified me the most about Rove on that show was at one point I ended up in the audience and he took uh, my co-host Adam Richards' glasses and put them on and he did an impersonation of me uh -huh. and I was in the audience and it was so spot on I was kind of like oh, is that what I look like? And it was all kind of right angles and it was pretty sweary and <laughs> it was on the money. Oh, right. We're holding a mirror up to yourself. That's scary. <laughs> yeah. what, are your, what are your favourite uh, bits from doing the shelf? Uh, pretty much... Uh, we never tell the audience who's on, so it's always exciting to just sort of be able to say, uh, anyway, next up, here's Rove, and then Rove comes out. Sure. Or, uh, you know, like we had uh, this year, we had Gareth Reynolds and Dave Anthony from America who host a, a great podcast called The Dollop, and having those guys on the lineup and having the audience really excited to see them. But then, you know, like, uh, you know, people like Claire Hooper and Cal Wilson who just yeah. have this... They have big followings anyway, but then they have very stylized followings because they do such intricate stuff within that show. Like, That's I get awesome. a kick out of all of it. Yeah. You surround yourself with such awesome people. And I love hearing when you get to meet cool celebrities. I know you met George Clooney. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us how that all came about? Because it started with a bad gig, didn't uh, it? Yeah, all right. All comedians have bad gigs, right? And we never talk about the good gigs because you know what they are? 
boring stories, but <laughs> right. I did a gig one year. It was the start of the year. It was for Queensland Rugby League uh, owners, and who would have thought that I had nothing in common with them? <laughs> and the gig was going well. I had to do 20 minutes. It was during the day. For the first 10 minutes, I tried lots of tricks. You know, when you try to get that fake... Uh, round of applause. So yeah. it's like, I'm looking at all these big guys. I'm saying, by round of applause, who here goes to the gym? And they're all... I'm like... <laughs> None of them go like, to the gym. You're either lying or you're on the roids. <laughs> and that got nothing. And this is how bad the gig was. From behind, I heard a poster peel off the wall <laughs> and float to the ground. Like, I heard one of the fundamental laws of nature, right? You're being heckled by physics. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I, like, when I was younger, I, that would have made me want to kill myself. But right. well, because it was, uh, it was about four years ago, I was like, oh, well, that's the kind of gig it was. Anyway, the money I made from that gig... George Clooney was coming into town and I thought, you know what, I could spend that money on rent <laughs> or I could donate it to some worthy cause or I could just spend it on meeting George Clooney. So I thought I will do that. And when I met him, he was the best. Like, this is... So you, you got to go up, introduce yourself and get a photo taken. And as I'm shaking hands with him, I said, oh, hi, George, I'm Justin Hamilton. He said, hi, Justin, nice to meet you. And I said, I've got to say, I've been a big fan of yours since you were in Roseanne. And he said, oh, don't bring up Roseanne. I had a hell of a mullet back then. And I said, oh, but that mullet inspired me to follow you. And, <laughs> you know, you've never let me down. Without missing a beat, he looked me in the eye and he said... What about Batman? <laughs> oh, wow. And I said, well, Batman put you in a position where you could meet Steven Soderbergh and you made the brilliant out of sight. And he laughed. And as a comedian, if you can make your hero laugh, that is cool, right? Wow, that's He's amazing. laughed and he's looked at me and gone, ha, we should hang out more often. And, <laughs> yes, please. And it was at that point all cool that I had just left and I just looked at him and went, Yes. Because <laughs> I had to fight the urge to say, well, let's get rid of these other arseholes. Uh, let's ring Brad. Let's ring Angelina. I'll get us some lattes. Oh. Uh, I know you like Nespresso. Let's go for it. Oh, that's so good. Well, in that case, I hope you have more bad gigs so you can meet uh, more awesome people. Thanks for co coming, Justin Thanks Hamilton. Thanks for having me on. Justin Hamilton, everyone. <laughs>